Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's Greg here at the Emerald Outback. Beautiful overlook over there, but even more beautiful potentially is my 2020 Orbea Rayon. And this is the M20 version. Wanted to give it a little review. A lot of people ask me, you know, what bike is that? Is that a stump jumper? <laughs> no. And I just wanted to go over some of the components that I've upgraded, tell you a bit about the bike, pros and cons, and what I'm thinking next. This bike is a 170 millimeter fork. It's a Fox Performance 36. I put a factory sticker on it just because it's turquoise and I wanted to yetify this thing. <laughs> but I found that the fork is super stiff. You know, the 38 has come out and I don't think you need it really. Um, it's really stiff. The travel, I mean, it's perfect. I've got a couple volume spacers in there. Stiffen it up further, prevent bottom mounts. You can see there's onyx hubs, uh, front and rear actually, which I really like. On the front here, I've got Knox wheels out of Knoxville, Tennessee. These are carbon Kitsuma wheels. And I've got blinged out with the turquoise nipples there on the spokes. Um, I've got a 203 mil rotor on the front and rear. These wheels, they aren't the lightest weight carbon wheel set, but that's not really what I was looking for. The reason I got the Katsumas is because they are 36 or 37 millimeter internal width, which is huge, but I'm a huge dude. Uh, it's actually really helped my balance and being able to kind of keep the bike vertical underneath me when I'm doing crazy climbs and things like that. So I really like that. Uh, as far as the wheel, uh, yeah, it's, it feels really heavy right now and uh, that's front and rear, but it's probably not the carbon. <laughs> it's cause I've got Kenda Hellcat Pro tires on there with the gravity casing. And these have the most grip of any tire that I've used. I uh, started off that came shipped with a Minion DHF front, DHR2 rear with the EXO casing. And that's, you know, standard, that's good. But uh, then I've put, let's see, Vittoria Mazza's on there. Those are kind of like DHFs, but lighter and a lot more fast rolling. Those are really fast and maybe too fast for me. Like I find that the bike tries to get away from me at times. Um, no longer with the Hellcats, this thing is rad. Uh, it really is kind of slow. So on the climbs, it's a bit much, but going downhill, man, talk about confidence inspiring. I really attribute that to the wide rims and the heavy tires. Making way into the cockpit, I've got ODI Elite Pro Yeti grips. And to be honest with you, um, I don't really like them. I mean, the color is right for what I was trying to do visually with the bike, but uh, I've put PNW Loam grips on them and those weren't grippy, but they were cushioned. These ODIs are super grippy, but kind of harsh to be honest with you, kind of harsh. Um, so I'm still looking for the best grips that I can get here. Uh, for the handlebar, I've got Deity, I forget if it's Speed Trap or Speed something, and the Yeti Turquoise. I think the thing looks cool. It's a carbon bar. I got them at 800 millimeter width, which I am six, six foot one and a big dude. Uh, that really fits me well. Um, I've got Shimano SLX for the drivetrain. I actually put an XT cassette on it just because, well, frankly, I break things and I broke the SLX, kind of bent out a cog or two. So I've got a SLX slash XT setup, and I don't really uh, like it as much as GX. I've ridden a couple bikes with the SRAM GX. I really like those a little bit more. 
Um, enjoy the hand painted with Yeti paint caps on there. <laughs> uh, for the stem, I've got straight out of Asheville, baby. Industry 9, the A35, 35 mil stem, and it is awesome. I mean, just like putting the bolts in there, it's like really smooth action. It grips the bar well, like when I crash. Oh, yeah, whoa! Ow. A lot. Some other things on the bike. I've got all mountain style stuff all over here just to keep the bling going with the turquoise accents, some frame protection. I've got it on the down tube as well. And the Rayon has a little kind of bumper at the bottom, but seeing what Evil puts out and some other bike companies, it's, it could be a little bit bigger and more robust. For the shock on the bike, it's got a DPX2, and now they call that the Fox Float X. It's kind of the trail, um, the trail shock, and it's poppy, keeps things lively. You know, this bike is an enduro bike, but it's on the trail side of enduro, certainly. You could put carbon rims that are really, you know, a bit thinner and like an aggressor rear dissector front. And this thing could really just be like an awesome trail bike. So I've raced on it, but it doesn't really take the downhill beating that some of the, you know, nuke proof gigas and stuff do. So it's really just an aggressive trail bike and owl mountain bike. Um, other components that I've got on it. I've got the stock Shimano cranks, nothing to really talk about there. I've got Crank Brothers Stamp 7 pedals. And what I like about those is that they're really wide and they're really long. You know, they're heavy, they're aluminum. I had race face chesters, they're just too small. I like the weight on them and it's not as though they didn't work. It's just that I, I've got size 13, 13 and a half feet. So uh, I need the biggest pedal possible. If you happen to know about pedaling innovations pedals, which are huge, if you've used those and you have like some comments, please put them in the comments below because that's my, that might be where I go next. Notice the bottle cage. This can fit a full size water bottle. However, it always kind of sticks out of the side a little bit. It really has a hard time fitting under the piggyback shock. So that's kind of annoying. It may be a mounting issue, but you know, it fits, but it's kind of ugly <laughs> the way it sits in there. I've got a salsa seat clamp that I painted Yeti turquoise for the dropper post. I upgraded to a PNW loam post, which has lots of adjustment. It's got the loam lever from PNW of course in the teal and uh yeah that dropper post is really good for the price i think uh brakes i've got slx on there and i i may end up upgrading those this bike cost me 44.99 us and for that price especially nowadays a couple years later it's a real bargain for the slx drivetrain and the fox performance um as far as the geometry goes on the thing, it has a, in the high setting, which is what I use, it has a 76 degree seat tube angle. And for the head angle is sitting at uh, 65 and it goes down to 64 and a half and 75 and a half for the seat tube. If you put it in the extra low setting, it's really not high and low, it's low and extra low. And I've put it in that setting, but I got so many pedal strikes because of the low bottom bracket that it really wasn't usable for me. So that's probably just because of my weight. You know, I've got to run 40, 45% sag just because the shock maxes out at a certain PSI. So my usable stroke on the rear shock is not that much. Um, and I just sit really low to the ground kind of. So I may end up going to like an MRP hazard progressive coil or something, but Overall, this bike, you know, I've been doing so much research about other bikes that I might go next after this, and 
I think maybe a degree slacker on the head tube, a degree steeper on the seat tube would be nice. I would also like to try out a mullet setup. Um, I ride my wife's 27.5 inch hardtail a lot and I love being that close to the ground and it feels really playful and um, so I really like that idea. The other thing about this Rayon, the M20 from 2020, is it doesn't have any internal storage anywhere, so I find myself using a Camelback a lot, even when I'm not putting water in it, and I'm like today. Uh, so really the cons I have, no frame storage, not slack enough, not steep enough, not mulletable, okay? Enter the 2022 Orbea Rayon. I don't have it, but it's mulletable, it has frame storage, and everything got steeper by a half degree or slacker in the head tube angle and steeper in the seat tube angle it's exactly like all the wish list items are checked off so do check out that because this bike rip frankly i ride park quite a bit uh, you've probably seen videos of me doing beach mountain and sugar mountain but this thing climb it's really lightweight. I think that it was like right at 30 pounds, which might be the lightest enduro bike out there. And it climbs incredibly well. Everybody who's ridden on it, taken a little lap has said that it climbs way better than any enduro bike should. Climbs like a goat. This could just be a trail bike if you kind of put thinner tires and thinner carbon wheels on there like it could just be like the ultimate trail bike for big heavy dudes <laughs> uh, so I would really consider getting for my next bike another one of these and I think that kind of says it all those upgrades that were made for the 2022 model that just came out last week at the time of filming are exactly what the doctor ordered oh yeah I am a doctor of music anyway that is my review of the 2020 Orbea Rayon M20 with some of the upgrades that I have made. Let me know what you think, if you ride a Rayon, if you agree with my review, and till next time, I just sent it best.